Hi friends, so welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, what we're going to learn is the basics of Adobe XD. So as soon as you log into Adobe XD or Adobe account and you open Adobe XD, you land to this page. This page gives you uh, a few options to maybe choose from a layout or have a custom size of the layout. So let's say we select a web-based uh, layout, we click on it and the Adobe XD file with the Adobe XD panels opens up and uh, to begin with you get you get to see this gray area which is our workspace and if I zoom in zoom out you can see that we have a huge workspace and in the workspace we have one sheet one white sheet which is called as the artboards so we have this one artboard here so that's why on the left side of the uh, page you can see in the artboards menu uh, we have the name of the same artboard here so let's say i rename this to my first artboard right and we get this artboard here so this is basically our layers panel so uh, first uh, so this is our first artboard now on the left side of this artboard or the layers panel we get to see the tools bar in the tools bar we have a few basic options that we get to see in mostly all the design tools first one is the select tool the, the shape tool which has the rectangle then the circle then the poly, polygon then the line and then the pen tool and then we also have the text tool and we have the artboard tool so this artboard tool is used to modify the size of the artboard or to create a custom size as a new artboard and then we have zoom and zoom out right so uh, this is on the left side and on the right side we have the properties bar so properties bar uh, acts as basically uh, the master tool panel for anything that you select on the uh, artboard right so if you have selected the artboard you get to see the properties of the artboard if you have designed something on the artboard and you select that particular layer you get to see the properties of that particular layer so that is how the properties bar works right so uh, we'll talk about it a little more uh, going forward so then on the top you get to see there are three different tabs one is the design tab where we we already are right now then we have the prototypes tab and then we have the share tab so uh, adobe xd is basically a tool which is meant for designing the ui and the ux for uh, web applications or mobile applications or any sort of applications digital applications right so uh, one thing is to design and then the second thing is to be able to convey the whole user journey how the user should be acting and interacting with the application so for that we need to connect more than one artboards through prototyping okay so we'll discuss about that also in a minute and then we have the share tab so once you have connected the artboards and you have a uh, presentable view where you want to uh, share this flow with flow, the user flow with the let's say the developers or the stakeholders for let's say uh, vetting your design and finalizing it uh, if everything is fine or maybe commenting uh, on the design you go to the share tab and uh, you create a shareable link and you share it with the stakeholders so now let's begin with doing something on the artboard so let's say let's create a rectangle on the top from the corner so let's say i take the full width of the full artboard and uh, i take the uh, height to be let's say 100 pixels now you see since i've selected the rectangle and my rectangle is selected right now so i get to see the properties for the rectangle right so i go to my select tool i select my rectangle and let's say i don't want the border here so i will remove the border now uh, a few basic things are here so that is the width and the height of the rectangle then the coordinates of the position of the particular shape so it starts from x0 and y0 so that means it starts from exactly the first corner of our box of our artboard so that is why the coordinates are 0 0 and then we have the appearance that is the opacity right the first parameter is opacity so how much opacity or the transparency should this uh, shape should be having and then we have the curvature of the boxes and that the, bo the box that we have created so right now i don't want any curvature so i have kept it at zero then we have the fill color that is white right now then uh, maybe let's say i choose a different fill color to be able to see what we have designed so far so okay so we have a header for our web page let's say 
then we have shadow parameters and we have another option to select this uh, particular layer for export okay now we have selected uh, our artboard we have one shape created on it now uh, let's create something on top of it let's say let's create a button on top of it so let's say i create a button on the right side corner now since i just clicked and dragged my buttons width and height is not even right so let's say i want my button to be of 200 pixel width and i want it to be of the height of let's say 40 pixels i think the 40 pixels height is too less for the button here so let's select 60 pixels now i select the select tool and i want to move it on the right side like this so now uh, a fascinating thing and an interesting thing to see here is that whenever i select a shape and we have more than one shapes or even just one shape on the artboard we can uh, see the see the dis distance between the corners of that spacing that is actually uh, very useful for the developers because it gives them the precise positioning of uh, different elements that we have on the artboard so i select the button on uh, the box for the button and i can see that on the right side we have 60 pixels on the top 20 and the, on, the, on the bottom 20 so it is like sort of uh, aligned to something right so now i i don't want to have the button to have strong edges sharp, strong sharp edges so i'll uh, leave the selection to this and i'll start increasing the value now to increase the value as a shortcut what we can do also do is we select the number we press on shift and arrow up increases 10 pixels at once so we have a nice curved button now let's put a text on it so as soon as i select the text layer and i click anywhere on my artboard you get to see that there is a layer added as a text layer which has an indication of t and on the right side you get to see the properties for the text layer right so let's say let's call this as login now we go here we so right now i'm just clicking and dragging and aligning it so you get to see the margins that are coming for the alignment which is very helpful for, for us to design faster uh, but other way is to select both the layers that you want to be aligned and on the right side you have the align panel on the top so center align from both the sides and you get the same uh, output now uh, on the button i don't want the border so i remove it now why i wanted to create a button for this video purpose is that i want to show you how we can create another artboard and connect this artboard with that artboard using our prototype right so let's move ahead let's create a another artboard so what i'm doing is uh, on my uh, keyboard i'm going to press ctrl d on windows and command d on mac and this duplicates my artboard but now on this artboard i don't pr i probably don't want this login uh, option on the top so i'll remove that on, on on my first artboard i'll select the first two layers that is my login text layer and the button layer and i press ctrl g or uh, i can right click and i can say group so this way this these two layers become a group and i can call them button and this way it is easier for me to move them and give them properties together right so now i have a layer uh, i have a group here and a layer which is our header layer and on this page i just have this header now uh, let's say let's uh, on the click of login i what i want to do is on the click of login the user should move to this page right so on this page uh, let's let's create a a rough login form area basically so i again align it like this now i don't want the border i want the color to be let's say light gray and i want it to be curved in the corners so yes we have a nice looking box there so just imagine that it is a very nice looking form for login and uh, on the click of this login i want the user to come to this page right so i select my button i go to the prototype tab and as soon as i go to the prototype tab and i have selected something on my artboard i get a tiny little blue arrow here right so now i select the blue arrow i basically clicked and dragging and i dropped on this page so because of that now my connection is selected so my properties bar shows me the properties of the interaction so by default the interaction is the tab interaction 
And here we get to see that the type with which the two pages would be interacting uh, is mentioned here. So it is a transition. Uh, I can have animation, I can have overlay, a lot of things. But uh, right now let's go with transition. And uh, so that this shows the destination, that is the second page that we have created where we want the user to land on the click of this button and the animation, how the transition should happen. So let's keep it at none right now. So now, how do I see what is going to happen when I click on login? So I know that is this that this is going to happen, but how do I see that in action? So we have a preview button on the top. I select my first artboard, I click on preview, I click on login and I uh, see how the user would be interacting with the flow, right? So I have two artboards now, but now the next thing that I want to showcase here is how you can share it with somebody who's a stakeholder who might be taking decisions on the flow or somebody uh, who's from the development team who wants to see uh, parameters and, and interactive actions, what is going to happen rare on, the, on what page. So for that, we need to go to the share tab. So before that, I click on the first artboard, I click on this box and uh, on the click of this box, I get the flow uh, created automatically and then I go to the share and from share, as soon as I land to the share, I get to see the properties of this flow on the right side. So the name of the flow and the view setting. So basically this is sort of like uh, permissions of what sort of options do you get uh, from the shared link, right? So right now let's leave it to design and the link access. So this is like whosoever has the link will be able to have this kind of permission. So let's create a link. So these are the default settings that come whenever you create a flow and you go to the share tab, right? So let's create a link. Okay, so a link is created. Now I click on this icon, which says copy link and I get the link copied. Now I open my browser. Put my link there. I click on enter. So now this link does not have any affiliation with my Adobe XD. So this is an independent link. So this link can be shared with anybody who even does not have access to Adobe XD, which is the best part for Adobe XD, right? So you design something and you want some opinion from somebody, you can just share the link. You want somebody to use your link to develop it. You can again do the same thing. And now uh, if I go to the full screen mode, I get to see how my website is going to look. I can see my button is looking too big. My font is too big. I have a very big header. I might not be happy with it. So I can go back to XD and make changes and update the link and it'll update this link on runtime. So anybody even having this link today uh, and I'm making this, I'm making these changes to the XD file tomorrow and updating it might receive all these changes in the same link. So I don't have to share the link again and they'll get to see the changes. Uh, updated on the same link any number of times, right? So now I go back from my full screen view, uh, view and on the right side, I get to see this icon, which is the comments icon. Now, as I mentioned that you, this link can be shared with stakeholders or developers or anybody. So let's say I shared it with somebody who wanted to give some feedback to me on this page. Now they can click on this place a pin. Uh, they can drop the pin anywhere on the page, wherever they want to mark a comment. So let's say I've dropped it here and I say uh, change the color of the header, right? Now I click save. So since I don't have an XD account, I let's say I go with continuous guest. I just give my name just for the reference of the owner of the link that this person has commented that you want to change that he suggests that the header color should be changed. So this comment remains here until the, either this person deletes it or the owner of the link deletes it, right? So uh, this is how you can easily uh, share the workflow that you have created in Adobe XD. And uh, the last thing that I want to explain in Adobe XD is that even though you created the file, you own the file, uh, the file is stored in your Adobe cloud, but if you want somebody from your team to also come and help, uh, and collaborate on the file with you, there is an option called uh, collaboration, right? So for that, I need to sh save the file. Uh, let's say, let's say test file. Uh, 
I click save. So now saving is in progress. So this file is getting saved on Adobe Cloud, Creative Cloud. So this file is saved. Now I click on this and I can add anybody's email ID who might have access to Adobe XD. So here, since they have to come and collaborate on the XD file, they do need an Adobe XD license, right? So uh, you click on this, you can enter the email ID and they'll get the invite. And from the invite, they can easily come back and anytime update on the XD file. So any changes they make, I can see on runtime. And similarly, I any changes that I make, they can also see on runtime. So this is sort of like the complete basics of Adobe XD, how you start the journey, how you uh, create artboards, then how, do, how you create elements on the artboard, then how you proceed to creating more artboards than one, and then linking them through prototyping, and then sharing them with a shareable link and then working again based on the comments and all and then updating the link right so this is how the journey happens and i hope that you have learned something and if you have uh, any questions or any uh, specific requirements that you want to learn in adobe xd please don't uh, hesitate in commenting or reaching out to me directly on my email that is mentioned in the top about a section of our channel and uh, do subscribe share thank you so much have a good day